You ready? Okay. Here's where I'm at. Sexuality. Ah. I like the way it starts, huh? Gets deeper. Um. Sexuality. In 2010 has really honestly evolved to such a degree that uh, um, it's come to a certain point where we really honestly have to um, get in a little bit more time on real talk because um, I think that's that one hump, at least one of the most major humps that we all need to get over. Sexuality. What do you mean by getting over? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, I'll give you the Jane Kennedy syndrome. Jane Kennedy was, oh, everybody who just thought that she was just the hottest. Everybody knew she was just a hot freak. Oh, my God. Just, But what made her what she was, she was the epiphany of pretty much a lot of what we saw in a lot of other people. I mean, basically speaking, men are erotic souls, but women, if we were capable of being able to take away that sanctity, that 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 that, that uh, divinity of, oh, she's the queen virgin, or this and the other, I'm sorry, uh, just like the old phrase, uh, a woman can run faster with her pants, with her skirt up, than a man can with, her, with his pants down. Um... And therein lies where this subject actually needs to go, and that's sexuality. Um, the Jane Kennedy syndrome was, uh, here was just a regular chick back in those, you know, 70s, 80s exploration opening kind of thing. And we almost made it back in those times, and I think that's the reason why a lot of baby boomer types right now are really having some difficulty after desensitization or demanipulation or or um whatever happened for them to really honestly forget how free and open and understanding they were of sexuality and yet still here we are all healthy and grown and uh I need to digress back into the Jane Kenny theory. Here was a chick that all oh, everybody was wanted to get into them draws. Oh, she's fine. Then all of a sudden, here come Lee uh, Isaac. Um, was that his name? Leon Isaac. Leon Isaac. And he was too sweet. And this did the other. He was player, player. And this did the other. And yeah, he almost was sexually open, but he had that quirk. That quirk that, in most cases, I think that Americans are have a more, you know, difficulty from it than a lot of people in the world. But even the people in the world still have that quirk. And that's that, oh, my God, not my mom, kind of thing. And, you know, women are so fragile, I'm sorry. If they could spit out a, a nine-pound baby out of the same cushy that most people actually want to worship, then trust and believe what I'm saying. Whatever it is you can grow between your legs as a man is not going to be um, threatening. And I digressed once again because that's how this whole uh, um, bootleg tape, private tape they made. And in this private tape they were had a scene and she was laying on the floor and they had a little bit of the old stereo and this and the other, you know, right up there. And she was on the carpet and he, she was playing a thing and she was feeling good, you know, and she butt naked looking fine. I mean, she had Del, Vanessa Del Rio fine at that point, and here they were, so he was eating that coochie, and he was fingering her, and um, she was getting into it, and she was like, yeah, yeah, put another one in there, he was like, really? And she was like, yeah, yeah, now mind you, this whole scene, this whole movie, this whole image was coming from just a married couple, two people in love that were exploring their sexuality together at that moment on film, and you could tell that he was kind of, huh, when all of a sudden she was like, oh, you know, you could tell that he was working it in, and he had three fingers, and at this point, she was, oh, oh, 
the more he started doggone shoving and stuff, he was like, damn, you like that for real? I got three fingers. So she was like, oh, at this point, she coaxed him after a minute of him actually feeling uncomfortable with putting all four fingers and whatnot in there. And she was trying to make him shove the whole hand in because at that point she was hot. I mean, oh, she was feeling it. It was the zone. And uh, for people that are into the BDS and what, you know, uh, lifestyle and whatnot, you can at least tolerate what I'm saying here. Um, and you could tell that, you know, in the scene, he was still kind of, un- oh, man, we, oh, man, I, re- I remember watching this with with some of my boys, and we were just screaming at the dog on uh, uh, TV, man, you sucker, man, don't be scared, she want more, she want more, so at this point, this mug finally actually gave in, that she was just begging him to put all five fingers and put the whole end and push it, yeah, and he's going to push it, I got my whole hand in, and at this point, she was like, yeah, yeah, and at this point, she was damn near growling, and the whole night, and it was just blowing dude away, because here he was with his hand up to his wrist and some chains, and she's still trying to get him to, you know, really just push it in the whole night, because she was feeling it, and he was sitting there looking at his hand and his coochie that he was like, you know, I can't wait to stick my dingling in. And knowing that his dingling was nowhere close to the size of his hand. And he thought he was tearing it up and she was just trying to, uh, uh, innocently as she could, in a freaky kind of way, trying to give off the signals, baby, it's okay. And I'm saying all this to say that not the fact that there was something unique or strange about the Jane Kennedy tape thing, more than it's an actual example of uh, where we are right now in our sexuality, and that mere fact that, you know, now we've, we're we okay for women to be bisexual and this, that, and the other, and all that, but we got this issue with pants on the ground, and while I first thought about it as a disgusting kind of disrespectful thing, then, you know, after actually playing with it again in the BDSM kind of manner, uh, thing about this whole prison kind of thing where there were men that actually, you know, became accustomed to sending out signals that when their pants were below their ass and whatnot, that was like, come and get it if you can kind of thing, or that's what I'm down for. And then I had to turn back around in a BDSM kind of manner and think about it by way of, okay, well, that that person could be bi or whatever. And, I mean, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a man doing that because there's probably a few women out there that actually, you know, can understand what I'm saying in a BDSM kind of way about how a man who allows his mate, rather be it heterosexual or homosexual, to actually penetrate his ass does not qualify him to be gay, nor bi, depending on the act and the people within that act. That's the way we also say sexuality is. Hold on, let me check the time. Uh uh-uh, uh, it's just eight minutes. And. Here lies the issue because while I I start studying some of this stuff and I start noticing that not everybody has their pants down, but I'm starting to wonder um, is there some homophobia going on? Because a lot of the people that I've noticed that he had their pants kind of up under their ass, uh, kind of advertising their booty, um, seem to give off some kind of um, comfort, even you know kink, with the mere fact that that was like that, and I think that there's more of a problem or an issue from a homophobic standpoint of people actually um, not being quite capable of being able to absorb or think that these are just bi or gay or bottom men, just like there are women that go around wearing no panties, exposing their bra and their ass and, and whatnot in the same way, and we don't really honestly say, bitch, put on some clothes, even though we want to sometimes. Um, And therein lies that interesting kind of twist with where we are as a people and 
how we're going to deal with sexuality. I mean, uh, if a man sucked a dick better than a woman, would you vote for him for president? Not that that's an actual reality, but think about it. This is Alpha Master Pimp Sir Easy. I am an active dominant and uh, into an upper metaphysical uh, journey in my sexuality. I'm not gay. I'm not into people playing with my butt. But I am wondering, why aren't we comfortable with being able to be cool rather you're that way or not? It don't make you no more dumb how many more inches you can take in your ass. 